Hey, Calvary family. We're so glad you're with us. You know, if there's anything that's holding you back from seeking after God, you have any fears, any anxieties, God just wants to set you free of that. And I just encourage you right now just to just give it all up to Him, surrender it to Him. Surrender your lives to Him. So that you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to worry about sin. We're His children, we're His sons and daughters. We don't have to be slaves to sin, slaves to fear. So I just encourage you right now just to surrender it all to Him. And just as we sing this, just to declare these words. Let's worship. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies. All my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child.
that tonight for your children, for those who are struggling, Father, with each of those things. Lord, I pray that, that we would be able to recognize in our mind and our heart that you are a powerful God. You are a powerful God. And as our Father in heaven, you desire what is best for us. And what is best for us is that we release those things to you. Not to clench them or hold them tight, but to release them to you. And so, Father, I pray that we would be brave enough to do that tonight. And to know that as a child of God, that you desire the very best for us. Thank you, Lord, for meeting us in all these different locations tonight. God, you are meeting us right now. We thank you so much for who you are. We ask that our ears be ready to hear the message that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good evening, Calvary family. Thanks for joining us uh, Tuesday night. Hey, what a fantastic Sunday that we had. Uh, it was just, it was great Sunday morning with the uh, the Pentecost focus, talking about the keys of the kingdom. But Sunday night, if you didn't join us uh, for our Sunday night Pentecost rally, it was powerful. What a what a great night. Um, and I, I really, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was uh, fantastic. And um, so I hope you're able to join us. We had a good crowd here that night. Uh, lots of good participation, lots of churches from the area. And so very encouraging. It's on our Facebook page. If you, if you missed it, you can go back to Sunday night. And uh, I'd, I'd love for you to uh, watch that. It was, it was really powerful. You know, um, I grew up in Royal Rangers, right? So I uh, I, I, I have all the, the camping skills. Now, I don't particularly care for camping anymore, primarily because I don't like laying on the ground. Uh, because a, a night of sleeping on the ground is about four days of being in pain. And so uh, I don't want to do that anymore. Um, but when, when, when I grew up in Royal Rangers, you know, one of the big things was, you know, the camping craft. And, um, you know, you learn how to you know build a fire and dig a latrine and do all these things. Uh, but I was always really I was really good at building fires. Um, uh, and so and I learned how to you know I was never you know how you see the, the the old movies they rub two sticks together. That's not how they did it. They would do a like a a, a rope around one stick and they would call a bow and drill. And it's I've done it that way. It's really 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 hard. Uh, you know we used to have to do uh, different camping things where we had to uh, there was a test to make a fire with just one match. Um, no, you weren't allowed to use any. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like like, like uh, lighter fluid or anything. Uh, we used to do it with flint and steel, just like they used to do in the 1800s, uh, where you, you've got a piece of rock and a and a striker, and you and you, you make sparks. We we have to we used to have to do all those things. In 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 making fires, um, I'll just I'll give you this tip. Um, the most effective shape for making a fire is a teepee, right? And so you get your bigger wood on the outside of the teepee, and then on the inside of the teepee, you've got the real um, like bird's nest kind of stuff uh, that you that's what you got to get lit and when you get that lit then you you put you had smaller pieces to do but here's the thing if you want a fire to succeed it needs lots and lots of air now this is not rocket science although rocket science does go on the same principle that in order for a rocket to have enough uh, power it has to have enough oxygen for the fuel to consume and so because it's that that consumption and so it's the same thing with fire uh, so if you ever build in a fire and it won't light make sure that you've got a good uh, uh flow through with your air and make sure that there's a lot of breeze not breeze per se but that there's a lot of oxygen that can get in there because if it, if it can't get enough oxygen it won't light and uh, i was i was thinking about that in in uh, in conjunction with Sunday, because Sunday we are emphasizing Pentecost, and it's a, the tongues of fire is often the uh, the the symbolism that we use, and uh, it was you know appropriate for that, and and the fire of the Holy Spirit is how we talk about it. And I, I was uh, here's what I was thinking about, because Pentecost Sunday is powerful, and it was great, and the Sunday night was fantastic, and Sunday morning was really good, and oftentimes we'll have these great experiences. But here's the question that I was presented with: is how do you have Pentecost? through the rest of the week, not just on Sundays, not just once a year. Ed Stetzer, who's a, he's a well-known uh, church guru kind of guy, but he's Baptist. Uh, he, he, he tweeted on Sunday, um, happy Pentecost Sunday, or as Baptists call it, happy Sunday. 
right? Because Pentecost is not a, a spectacular thing for Baptists. But here's the thing. Um, leading, coming out of Sunday, we don't want to just have a momentary experience. If you look in the book of Acts, the, the powerful thing in the book of Acts uh, was the day of Pentecost, but the real power in the book of Acts was the continuation of the, the, the power and authority. And so as I was thinking about it, I'm like, how do you maintain Pentecost? And I, w- I was really encouraged looking at 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6, it says this, For this reason I remind you, fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of hands, of my hands. For the spirit of God, this, the, the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his pres- prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has destroyed death and has brought to life and brought life and immorality to light through the gospel. And so here's, here's, there's a couple of things in this, this portion of scripture that helps us to keep in mind how we uh, maintain Pentecost. First of all, it says fan the flame. You know how we fan the flame? And it sounds, listen, it's, it's, I, I, I sound like a broken record in this. And for the last four years, I know I've sounded like a broken record in this. Pray, read your Bible, worship, submit to Jesus, spend time in his presence. Fan the flame of the gift. But then it also says, right, what it says, gives us power, love, and self Discipline. The denial of self is one of the most important things in our process of becoming like Jesus. Yesterday, in we had a special chapel at Calvary Academy, and uh, the speaker, one of the missionaries that we support, Andy Lynn, he came in and he shared. He goes, you know, the the reality is that by the Bible tells us that our desires are all wrong. Uh, because we, we have to deny ourselves and make our desires the desires that Christ has for us. And so um, self-control is is essential. And then and what's, it says, he saved us, called us to a holy life. A life committed and dedicated to Jesus Christ. And so here, here's the thing I wanted to say, is that Pentecost is not an event. It's a lifestyle. It's not just a moment. It's not just a feast. It's, it's a desire to be fully and wholly submitted unto Jesus, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and announcing the kingdom of God. But we are living in a style, and not a style, we're living in a manner that fans the flame of the gift that God gave us. And I think so many people, they, they have that ember of desire within them, but they don't intentionally fan that flame. And here's my desire for our church and for for every believer that has ever experienced the power and presence of the Holy Spirit is that you would take time to fan that flame and allow it to rise up. Because if we don't intentionally, what's that look like? Man, spend time with other believers. Come to church. Worship God. Allow God to speak into your life and shape and mold you and make you. And when that happens, the, the, the focus of our life becomes Jesus. And that's transformative. It fans that flame and allows Pentecost to continue and allows that power-filled life to persist in every aspect of what we do. Victory is never found on our own. It's only found through Christ Jesus, and it's only found through allowing him the proper place. And so I want want you to be encouraged. For this reason, I remind you, fan into the flame the gift of God. Fan that flame. Allow the oxygen of God to permeate your life, to fan that ember so it bursts into a flame and that your life is filled with Pentecost every day. It's possible we can live that life. We just have to make intentional decisions and proper steps in order to allow God to have the right position and place in our life. Father, right now I pray. I pray that you would fill us to overflowing. Give us that want and desire to be in your presence. Allow us, allow us a greater sense of who you are, a greater measure of your blessing and anointing. Be with us tonight. Let Pentecost not just be a moment or a day. 
Let Pentecost be a lifetime of following you. Fan the flame of revival in our hearts and in our church. Be with us tonight. In your precious name, amen, amen. Hey, God bless you. Have a great night. We'll see you here tomorrow night on Facebook Live, uh, or we'll see you Thursday night uh, for our next evening devotion. God bless. Have a great night.